Hey guys, it's Vanessa. I just wanted to give you an update with some new information on the disappearance of Suzanne Morphew out of Chafee County, Colorado. When I put out my first video on the disappearance of Suzanne Morphew on Wednesday, not a lot was known about her disappearance at that time. However, since Wednesday, more information has come out online. There's definitely a lot more speculation going on and we have had our first public press conference. There were a few things in my first video that was speculation but has now been confirmed. Um, it looks like, you know, of course we do know now that her bike was found after her disappearance on Mother's Day evening. The CBI and the FBI both announced their involvement in the case and the reward for any information on Suzanne was up to $200,000. There is a new area that they are looking at because they did find some new evidence in her disappearance. We know that the area is closed off while they do their investigation. And we also got an update from the county sheriff's office. As we know by now, Barry and Suzanne moved to Chafee County, Colorado about two years ago from Indiana. In Indiana, Suzanne was a middle school teacher and Barry owned landscaping companies. From what I can see, they came here to retire about two years ago and Barry became a volunteer wildlands firefighter for Chafee County. They moved here with their two girls while Suzanne opened a nonprofit called Hope Network Inc. for children in need. We can see that Barry loves to hunt and pretty much loves everything outdoors. We can also see that Suzanne loves fitness and loves to bike and travel and loves the outdoors as well. So Colorado seems like a perfect fit. There's been so much talk around online and even on my first video in the comments about people discussing this whole thing about why do so many of these high profile cases happen in Colorado and the debate on the Colorado natives versus transplants and people talking about how it's the transplants that move here that seem to be involved in these cases. I can't really argue with, the, I guess, that line of thought or at least people having that impression. Of course, you've got the Watts case, you've got Gannon's case recently in the news, and both of those situations are people that transplanted in from other states. I will say coming from someone who lives here, I'm a transplant myself. I've lived here for nine years and I do have some friends that are Colorado natives, but I will agree that most people that I meet are transplants as well. And every time there's speculation in a case like this, people do, some people get upset, but you know, anytime that you have all the elements that you have in this case and anytime you have people that, you know, follow true crime all the time, there are some things that are a little strange that stand out in this case. So let's talk about some of those. First and foremost, the timeline and how she was originally reported are the subject of a lot of rumors. At first, it was being said everywhere that Suzanne had allegedly told her neighbor to call the police if she hadn't returned. But yesterday, I was hearing from more and more sources that it was actually her daughter that allegedly could not reach her mother and alerted the neighbor to call the police. And the first day it was reported, I saw a couple people online saying that she had left at 5.30, which made no sense to me because we know that she was reported missing at 5.46 p.m. No one was gonna be reported missing after 16 minutes. However, today I saw that the neighbor had allegedly said an hour. So we're thinking more 4.30 p.m. So still the fuzzy timeline. Of course, you also have the fact that it was a Sunday evening and it was Mother's Day. So a lot of people kind of stuck on the fact that she was by herself and he was, from what's being reported, away on business. And I've seen two different things. I've seen people saying that he was doing the volunteer firefighter training. And then I've also seen that it was because of the landscaping business. There's also the discussion because of the current situation with the stay-at-home orders. I do have a friend that told me today she had been camping down in the Chafee County area recently and that it was on lockdown. She explained that when she was down there, anyone who was not a resident was being fined $1,000 and it's been this way since March. Of course, it's also been reported that Barry did decline to make a public plea for his wife's safe return, saying that it was too soon. To add yet more fuel to the fire, there was a public post today by a man from Indiana named John Schmitz. It says on his public profile that he is a candidate for the Indiana House of Representatives. Although the validity of his statements will have to be vetted by those in charge, it's worth mentioning that he claimed he called the tip line and that he was assaulted twice 
by Barry in Indiana. He says that he saw quote unquote evil in his eyes and he also claims that Barry entered a diversion program to avoid the charges. I will say that this kind of falls in line with things that have started, comments that have started popping up from people in Indiana in different social media groups. And of course, as I always state, whether or not those are true is for those in charge to decide, but these are claims that have to do with the case and are worth mentioning. We haven't been told what the item is that investigators found that belonged to Suzanne, but what I would guess that it isn't would be her cell phone. There have been people reporting that they do have some inside knowledge and that Suzanne did not have her cell phone with her. Of course, this is rumor until confirmed by law enforcement, but if that were the case, it would be interesting to know if that isn't the normal routine for Suzanne. So as we continue to learn more and more about this case and hear from different people coming out, Suzanne's situation is becoming more and more concerning. At this point, my biggest question would be, when did anyone speak to Suzanne voice to voice on Mother's Day? And do we even know if she went on a bike ride at all? On Friday afternoon, the Chafee County Sheriff's Office held a press conference regarding Suzanne's disappearance. Um, her investigation still remains the top priority of the Chafee County Sheriff's Office, and it is a missing persons investigation. Um, being that it's a top priority with the Sheriff's Office, we've solicited the help of many local and law enforcement agencies, but we've also solicited and received the help of the Colorado Bureau of Investigation and the Federal Bureau of Investigation and they are here now and they're actively working with us on this investigation. Um, we've spent countless hours searching for Suzanne and I want to thank everybody that's been involved in the investigation but I also want to thank the community and even our uh, social media community. We have pictures that have been published and the top priority it, in this is to find Suzanne and so I want to thank everybody for the cooperation we've been getting and we ask that you continue that support. Um, we've started a tip line with the assistance of CBI and I want to give you that tip line number right now because that's kind of our our lifeline for this thing and if anybody has any information whether you think it's little or big we encourage everybody to call that number and give us that information and I'm going to give you that number right now. It is um, Tip line number is 719-312-7530. I uh, want to give you a little brief um, recap of what we've done since we received the call of Suzanne's disappearance on Sunday. Uh, just we've in the area and in the general area, we've run foot searches using air support, canine support, swift water support, and we've also utilized countless hours of drone searches. We've used well over 200 personnel and over 2,000 man hours have gone into this search, but unfortunately we haven't found Suzanne yet, and as I stated before, that is our top priority. Uh, yesterday afternoon, which is Thursday, in the area of County Road 225 and Highway 50, we did find inf um, items that we believe were personal items of Suzanne Morphew, and that uh, launched a bigger search. We uh, had today, which included the full closure of U.S. Highway 50 on Monarch Pass. In that search, we used uh, today well over 90 searchers that are well-trained individuals from both our local agencies as well as the FBI and CBI. We searched uh, over two and a half miles using grid patterns. Unfortunately, we found no other items in that area at this time. We'll, we're in the process right now of reevaluating where we are with the information we received. And I want to I want to let everybody know that we are receiving information and so we're constantly reevaluating that information and based on that will determine what our actions are tomorrow searching. However, I want to remind everybody that while we're doing this, the investigation continues. Okay, so as I said before, this is a top priority of ours and we're working very hard on this. Um, once again, we, we, it's just so important to thank everybody for uh, the outpouring assistance we've gotten. We've gotten a lot of requests from the community for uh, volunteer searchers and we really really appreciate the assistance however in this type of an investigation and search we're using uh, trained personnel and so we have to tell these people we're not accepting this help but we do appreciate the offer so I want everybody to know that. Once again I want to remind everybody 
that the tip line is 719-312-7530. And we've, uh, we've published many pictures of Suzanne, so we encourage everybody to take a look at that. And if they have information, call us. The question was if I can repeat what the items were found. Just so everybody knows, I can't offer any information on any clues or any uh, anything we found during this investigation. It is an open investigation, and so we can't disclose that information at this time. Yes, ma'am. Do you guys believe she's still alive? The question is, is do we believe she's still alive? We, we're certainly hopeful she is. Uh, obviously, as time goes by, it, it gives us concern, but we're searching as though she's alive, and we do believe she should, still could still be alive. Yes, sir. Um, you gave a tip line. If, if the community members are trying to search for her, what can they look for? You know, how can they reach out? The question is, is how, how can the community help us in the search? As I stated before, the, the biggest thing that we are looking for is any information that anybody has. If they're in the area on Sunday the 10th, call the tip line. If they see somebody that they think resembles Suzanne, call the tip line anything they think is important you know it's like we talk about in uh, national security if you see something you think is suspicious call it because you never know and this is the same case if you think it's important call us we're going to look into it we have a lot of people working on this and we're working on everything we can and excuse me we just appreciate any help we can get question is she's an avid biker and if we're searching normal routes uh, it's my understanding she did bike quite a bit and we've searched nearly that we've searched that whole area it doesn't mean that we're not going to keep searching but as we expand our search it's based on what we find and information we receive so we're not ruling anything out but we have to evaluate that that information on a daily basis sir question is is clues and if we recover the bike once again i can't comment on any on any items we found or any part of the investigation okay if, if we're we're if we're still looking at, at an animal could be involved on any open investigation obviously you don't rule out anything we've not found anything that would indicate that however we're always evaluating. We've been in that area so much. We're always looking, obviously, and any clues we have, we're going to follow up on. How many tips have you received? You know, I don't have that information. However, as far as specific, I have talked to our investigators. We've gotten a, a lot of tips, and uh, it seems as though they're picking up as the word gets out. Now, I notice on our Facebook page alone, the sheriff's office, we'd reached, well, close to half a million people. That's important. That's that's a lot. And we get we get those reaches by shares on Facebook. So I encourage everybody, if you get the information, push it out to other people because that's how we get the information out. Is the husband cooperating? Yes, he's been cooperative at this point. We hope he continues to do so. What is the investigation going to look like in terms of physically being out on the road? Are you going to close the highway again? How is that going to look like? We, uh, the question is if we think we'll possibly close the highway again. We don't know yet. We're talking about that right now based on what we found today, what tomorrow looks like. We'll try to get that information out as soon as we can. However, based on certain aspects of our investigation, we have to evaluate everything and decide when the best time is to do that. We're still, it's still a missing persons investigation, however. They bring in a lot of assets that we don't have locally, and they're, they're a great help. So that's the reason for bringing them in. So it continues to be a missing person investigation. Well, just two more questions. Yes, sir. For a small town like this, how much does a missing person you know, impact the community? You know, we, it, it has a big impact our, in our community. We're small, pretty tight knit, and a lot of people, there's a lot of people that are concerned about this. But you know, it's not just locally. I've seen a lot of concern nationwide. I mean, this hits a lot of a lot of different uh, a lot of different homes, and and it, there's just been an outpouring of concern, and it's pretty impressive. Can you talk about the, compare the size and area that you started off searching, and what it what it has expanded to now? The question is, is how big our search area has expanded? Uh, we started off obviously. You start off 
semi-small when you get the information obviously expands as you maybe find things or as you receive information we've expanded quite a bit um, it's uh, just to, to reiterate we don't know where we'll be tomorrow we're going to reevaluate where we are today and we'll make decisions based on that last question is suicide being considered at all i'm sorry i didn't hear you is suicide being considered at all uh you know in any investigation you look at all aspects and that is part of the investigation is you look at backgrounds and so um, since we haven't found her you don't rule out anything however we don't suspect it where do we go from here um we go <laughs> honestly uh <laughs> we go tips tips are huge we're um We've got a big team of investigators from very different aspects of expertise that we're looking at everything we possibly can. Um, we just keep going, honestly. We're, this, is, this is a very big, it's our top priority. We're pouring all our resources into this as well as many other agencies. And we, I, I don't you know how else to say it, we just go. It's, but the community can, can give us a lot of help. I mean, the second set of eyes is huge. And we've seen that in so many different situations that um, we need help, we can always use help. So anything you do for us, we appreciate it. One of the things I always look for in these cases is what law enforcement isn't saying. In October of 2012, when 10 year old Jessica Ridgway went missing, none of us who lived in the community at that time will forget when the Westminster PD chief of police held a press conference and told us that there was a predator in our community. Several weeks later, 17 year old Austin Sig was apprehended and charged with her murder. When 11 year old Gannon Stouck went missing this past January, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office was not telling us that there was a predator in our community because they had their eye on Letitia Stouck almost immediately. This is just my personal opinion, of course, but based on the Chafee County Sheriff's Office press conference. I did not infer that we need to be afraid of some psychopath snatching women off of bike paths. It seems to me they have some type of idea, but of course are remaining extremely tight-lipped. Of course, despite all of this new information, we are still hoping that Suzanne is found safe and alive. I will be closely following the story and bringing you updates as they come. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified of my new videos.